Today, I'm going to be teaching you how to make a working cutscene inside of Roblox Studio. Here is an example of it working. As you can see, the cutscene camera moves around this uh, this plane nicely. It can be animated, changed, and there's a skip button. This can be launched if you have like entered the game for the first time, and it can also be launched in other ways as well. It's a really fantastic plugin, and I can't wait to show you how to use it. Okay, then to install the plugin, you want to head over to our toolbox here, and we want to go make sure this says plugins, and you want to search for cutscene and pretty much like there there we go and we have codes otaku cutscene yeah you want to install this make sure that's all installed and then we'll have these we will have this plugin here now let's start off by just clicking on it and as you can see we get this sort of window i'm going to put this into my window here because I, I like this side bit and yeah as you can see we have loads of different options and i'm going to teach you how to use each one so first things first, you need to type your name. So I'm just going to call this video as I'm doing it for a video. And you want to press, just click on that. And as you see, it says cutscene created successfully. Just click on this and it goes away. Now, to edit the camera here, we have this, these little buttons here. So FOV here, effects, your FOV, I think you all know what FOV is if you've ever played any sort of game. Um, it's your field of view and it increases and decreases. And you can make some really cool cinematic effects. I'm not a fan of the high FOV, I like this kind of lower one, I think it looks really quite cool. Tilt, obviously, you can tilt your camera back and forwards, which is quite cool as well. So yeah, I'm gonna, you can also change these values directly by just typing um, with your number pad here. Uh, I think the default here is 70, and yeah, pretty much down here we have all our different um, different options. So this here is delay of when it, each, when it reaches each camera point, then you have a delay here. Duration for each part, and then this part here pretty much gives us a different idea of how it moves. Now sign here uses the sign graph if you know anything about maths. Um, it's a curve, it's a curve kind of graph which pretty much means that camera is really nice and smooth when it goes through and at harsh corners whereas linear would show those harsh bits, sign will even that out quite nicely. And in and in out, um, if you know anything about animation this depends on the different way that things are moving. Um, there's also this feature here called record and this one here is where you can just move your camera around and record it rather than manually adding each part and then here we can uh, have a look at different parts of the cutscene okay so let's just go over the default part here now and let's capture the camera position because I'm gonna have this cutscene so it's gonna zoom in okay so if I press capture camera position as you see we get this little um, this part here with an indent coming out just to show which direction the camera is pointing and we can move it wherever we want to go so I'm going to bring it down uh, to here bring it across a bit more I'm probably going to change the FOV to increase a bit more give it a bit more interest and maybe tilt it as well I don't know I can we can just mess around with this quite a bit I'm going to capture this position as well um, I'm going to revert the FOV so I can see a bit better make sure the tilt is back to zero Okay, so there we go, that moves there, and then finally I'm going to bring it down to here, where you can press things like different options, so if you want to click on this part here, you press look at part, it will lock onto this part, so um, you can follow quite nicely, so I'm just going to capture this position as well, and as you can see we have this line here, this uh, cylinder to show the general direction of the camera, obviously it's more curved as we use a sine graph rather than a linear graph, and um, yeah, that's how you do the standard part. Let me test this and show you how it works. You just want to go down here and generate script. Okay, by default, what this will do is we'll create something and start to play scripts. And this here is a local script, pretty much explaining that when the player joins the game, the cutscene will play. Um, you can freeze controls if you want to, so players can't do anything. You can make sure it loops if you want to. Um, all of these different uh, events here. You can use these events and fire them from separate scripts. So if you know if you want to use like a server script or something to fire this when you reach a certain point or something, that's up to you. Down here we have our cutscene uh, UI. So if you want to put this into starter UI, we have a skip button. You can edit that however you like. Music as well. If we go to properties of the music here, we can change to get some kind of sounds if you want to make the cutscene have sounds. It's completely up to you. And here we have some values like cooldown, stop event, all this kind of stuff where you can change things okay so protect the character whilst playing i recommend turning this one it gives you a force field around your player 
So let's say you join a game and it's a fighting game, the cutscene will not allow you to be killed, which is quite useful. Okay, and maybe if you have like a kill effect, you know, like in War Zone, where you get like a finisher move, this is similar to that. Okay, okay, so here we are in the game. As you can see, we have our really cool looking cutscene. Each part is playing quite nicely. As you see, our FOV is increasing, the tilt is happening. When we reach each part, it spins round just as we wanted into our player position where we can now move our player however we like and that is perfect okay okay so f just for now i'm going to delete this cutscene i'm going to show you how to make a recorded one this might be easier for people who aren't so interested in making you know different kinds of cutscenes i recommend increasing fov as always i think low fov is always better for cutscenes i think it adds a cinematic effect which the standard 17 never can pull off we're going to call this the record and then we want to go to this okay as you see it's spawning in every five seconds there we go there's another one because so that's the interval change each part will now change depending on which position you get your camera into i'm going to bring it right down to the player here and then do stop okay and there we go we have now recorded one rather than manually placing each bit this is a lot easier if you uh, want to make this quickly but obviously you can't edit it perfectly so if you just press play we can see the cutscene without um, without you to play the game it's just testing as you can see it follows our little path which we generated earlier to perfection um, everything is nice and smooth there we go and um, yeah let me tell you a couple things that can help you with this plugin Obviously, if you want to change your transition type like this, for example, things like quad is nice and smooth, bounce uh, gives you a little shake, elastic um, speeds up then slows down, I think that's quite nice. Um, I've never used quintal quad to be honest, so I can't really tell you how that goes. And exponential means it's increasing quickly, if you know what an exponential graph is, you know it's um, constantly increasing by a certain amount each time. And yeah, this is the cutscene plugin. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoy my videos. Please remember to subscribe, join my Discord server, and follow me on Twitter if you fancy some updates. Thank you very much for watching. My name is Harry, and goodbye.